Hello, this is Gigao. This is one of three videos that I did in December uh, for a charity stream, a series of charity streams for Stand Up to Cancer. So it's uh, a, vi a presentation on an aspect of cancer. Uh, and I thought I'd share it on YouTube for people to be able to watch it. Enjoy. Hello, guys. How is everyone doing? I hope your week uh, is going uh, nicely. Um, so I mentioned it in previous streams uh, and uh, on the Discord. Hey, Viking. Ça va très bien, merci. How are you? So uh, we're going for a, let's say a week. It's not actually completely a week. Uh, three streams, the next three streams. So... Um, Tonight, Saturday night, and Tuesday, next Tuesday night. Oh, shucks. Sorry to hear that, uh, Viking. Um, so let me check. Now that you have tested, thank you. Yeah, good. Okay. Uh, perfect. It works. Uh, it's the first time I use uh, Nightbot to uh, for a giveaway, so I'm learning. <laughs> um, so... Uh, for the next three, th next three streams, yeah, I'm going to make it. Uh, so today, Saturday, and um, Tuesday, next Tuesday, I will be streaming uh, for cancer, fighting cancer. Uh, basically, uh, I w I'm in contact with Amplitude Studios, who makes uh, Humankind, uh, and they've invited me. Uh, even though I'm a small streamer, to participate. Basically, it's something that is organized by uh, Sega. Um, and so... Uh, oh, scheiße. Wow, that's short. Oh, in uh, France and Belgium, uh, there is what they call the uh, Christmas truce when they can't kick uh, anybody out uh, during uh, the winter period. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and so we're, they invited me to participate in streams to try and donate uh, money uh, to fight cancer. So it's, uh, we're supporting an association called Stand Up to Cancer, uh, who finances uh, research against cancer. Uh, some of you may know uh, I've worked in uh, cancer research. Uh, I'm, I'm almost going to say in a previous life. Uh, it was until uh, soon to be three years ago. I was working in. I've worked in different uh, research institutes. Uh, the last decade was uh, research involved in uh, uh, immunity and cancer, and so it's. Uh, obviously, more than just, you know, we've all had people uh, who um, who have suffered, uh, well, who have lost uh, relatives to, to cancer, but I've also worked in it, and it's, so it's a, a subject that is close to my heart. So when Amplitude Studios uh, invited me, I said, uh, that sounds like a great idea. Uh, because cancer is a very broad project, a broad subject, uh, very diverse, and so uh, well, there are m there's not one cancer. Uh, there are many cancers, and so it's a very difficult subject. And so I thought that maybe I could use a bit of my knowledge uh, and share it. Uh, hello, Arnaud. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's an important one, uh, but yeah, we have, yeah, there are several, uh, so today I'm not going to talk about really therapies, uh, if you're interested and, uh, I can do some, uh, prepare something either for Saturday or for Tuesday, uh, on the different, uh, therapies, the different, uh, paths. Uh, for therapies that um... <laughs> psyching that's bad 
Uh, well, uh, to be honest, I ha I would have to to look at that. Uh, I have no idea why it's called cancer. Uh, etymology. The word comes from the yeah, it would mean crab and tumor. Okay. Um, Greek physicians Hippocrates and Galen, among others, noted similarities of crabs uh, to some tumors uh, with uh, swollen veins. The word was introduced in English uh, in the modern uh, medical sense uh, around the 1600. Cancers comprises, uh, yeah, cell growth. We're going to talk about that. But so apparently it's because the, yeah, it's uh, the Greek word, uh, but I don't know how to pronounce it uh, for cancer, means both crab and tumor. Uh, thank you, Leo. I didn't know that. Uh, very interesting. For some years before I have to stop, uh, I have back less. Yeah, I have, uh, well, I did a PhD in molecular biology. At that point, I was working more in, uh, well, I was working on a virus that I'm going to mention early, uh, later on, which causes leukemia. Uh, so, uh, but I was working more on the uh, the virus part of the game, not really on the uh, on the leukemia or the mechanisms uh, leading to cancer. Uh, it's only later on uh, in my uh, in my work that I w w went to work uh, with cancer, doing a bit like my father, who worked also. Uh, he started his PhD on virus, oncogenic uh, virus. And uh, ended up uh, working on uh, on cancer, uh, mostly uh, breast cancer and bladder uh, cancer. Just link you a few discords to try. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I'm considered back plus eight, plus eight. Uh, it's a, a doctorate, uh, the doctorat. PhD uh, for the English. So, yeah. Um, so I propose that we work. So uh, stand up to cancer. Uh, where is it? There. Uh, is organizing. Uh, thank you, Amplitude, Amplitude Studios, for the raid. Thank you so much, Amplitude Studios, for the stream. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Uh, very glad to have you guys. So yeah, as I was saying, um, I have a PhD, a PhD in molecular biology, and I've worked in cancer. And so I thought before starting playing Endless Space 2, uh, which should... Uh, uh, which I will be doing in a few minutes. I thought that I would give some information on the molecular aspects of biology, trying to keep, remain uh, simple. Um, yeah, so uh, and so I will be streaming again uh, on Saturday evening and on Tuesday evening. Uh, if um, possibly one of those evenings, maybe I could try to get some information and uh, gather back some information and give some uh, of the the roads some of the uh path that are uh some of the leads in uh fighting cancer uh obviously there are multiple types of cancer and therefore there are multiple routes of uh treatments and there are new treatments coming uh regularly if you not use you <laughs> So yeah, and so uh, thanks a lot to Amplitude Studios for inviting me to to do this. Uh, honestly, I really really appreciate it. And so uh, we will try to. So um, if you want to help out, uh, there is the command donate. Uh, and so you can go to uh, click on that link and uh, give money one dollar, five dollar. Uh, it's every sum count. Um, so yeah, don't hesitate to, to help, uh, the fight against cancer. Oops. 
So cancer, what is cancer? So we've just discussed that cancer actually comes from the Greek. I don't know the exact pronunciation of the word uh, because the Greeks felt that the tumors with the veins uh, looked like a crab. Uh, I've discovered that just before <laughs> at the start of the stream. So uh, cancer is considered as an overgrowth of cells. So it's cells that start uh, to no, no, no problem. Uh, we are all together. We are all uh, here to have a uh, nice evening. Uh, we can all give what we can give, and if we can't, well, I, I'm not asking you to ruin yourself either. Uh, it's just if you have some uh, some some money to give out, uh, there's a possibility. Um, so, which is, uh, so cancer is an overgrowth of cells, so it's cells that grow uh, too much. Uh, and usually, uh, given, uh, hey, sign up to cancer, thank you very much for organizing this. Um, and uh, which genetic uh, injuries that confer a genetic a growth advantage over, nor over normal cells. Uh, my pleasure, my pleasure. As I said uh, earlier, I've worked in cancer, uh, even if I don't anymore now. Uh, but so it's a, a subject that is uh, close to my heart. Uh, thank you for the follow. Um, and cancer uh, becomes like antisocial uh, units. Been a huge fan of Sonic fan, and here in Sega treats me not just as a fan, but as also as a friend. Nice, that's very nice. Uh, <laughs> can't cancel it. So yeah, yeah, don't don't sell your lungs, please. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm Gigao. Uh, just a short uh, parenthesis. I'm Gigao. I am a modder and beta tester for games by uh, Paradox Interactive, mostly Europa, Europa Universalis Four. Uh, recently, I got the opportunity uh, to uh, know Humankind and Amplito Studios. Uh, I've had great fun streaming uh, the Humankind um, open dev. And I'm looking forward to the release to, uh, to play some more. And I got contacted by uh, Cat of Nine Tales um, from... Uh, uh, Amplitude Studios to, to stream. I shall. Um, and so I was invited to... I'll have to check that afterwards. Um, just a second. And so I've uh, and so uh, I was invited to participate. I've uh, worked on cancer before, so uh, it's a subject very very close to my heart. Um, and so the Amplitude Studios offered me uh, some uh, a key for Endless Space Two, and I thought it was a good opportunity to discover it and uh, have a uh, at least three three streams today. Uh, to, uh, Saturday, same hour, Tuesday, same hour. And uh, then uh, if all goes well, maybe we'll continue. I'll pick a day, uh, Tuesday or Thursday, probably during the week and continue on uh, later uh, that uh, campaign. So uh, yeah, so cancer is an overgrowth of cells that it's related to uh, genetic injuries that allow, uh, that gives um, those cells a genetic uh, a growth advantage over normal cells. Uh, and quickly they become characterized by an antisocial uh, uh, behavior that allows them to not be constrained by the same thing as other cells. Uh, and I will get back on that a little later on. Uh, I've been serious over the cancer awareness and Chadwick Boseman died of colon cancer last uh, August. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. So normal cells... Um, have some different cells. I will go over there. They have uh, oncogenes uh, and tumor suppressor genes, 
which are expressed at different levels. Uh, they are very important because uh, those genes, those proteins uh, will have an impact on mitosis. So mitosis, uh, just a small, uh, it's basically the division of the cells. So um, when you grow, your cells obviously divide to, uh, to create more of you. Uh, and all the cells uh, live, die, uh, and so dying cells have to be replaced. So the other cells have to uh, replicate, and that's especially important for the, for example, the immune system, where you have cells that live, die. They, the 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 red blood cells have a well, most cells have a limited uh, limited uh, lifespan, uh, and so these. Uh, divisions are controlled by uh, growth factors, uh, so that are not just related to uh, to growth, like uh, to grow up, but also to for cells to to divide. Uh, and so, don't worry about this. It's uh, a little bit complicated, but uh, I will we will remain simple. So basically. The cell, the mitosis, the cell division, uh, will involve certain as certain uh, aspects. Uh, yeah, I don't have any pointer. That's that's too bad. So you see that there are uh, four main phase. Uh, the mitosis itself, it's <laughs> getting uni vibes. Yeah, I know, I know. So it's when the cell really divides, and before you have G one. G1 and G0, it's the phase where the cells are basically doing nothing. And then there is a restriction point, which will make the cell uh, enter the, the division cycle. And this will start with a phase that is called phase S, where the uh, chromosome, the DNA, is uh, duplicated. Then we have the G G2 phase, where you have uh, a larger cell that basically has uh, double the um, the DNA, the, the double of each chromosomes, and then uh, when you have the mitosis, uh, the cells uh, divide, and you have two cells that are now in G1 or G0. So uh, the difference between G1 and G0 basically is that G0 is basically differentiated cells. Uh, so those are the cells that will have uh, different uh, functions, like for example, you have muscle cells, cells that uh, generate bones, cells that degrade bones uh, for it to be always. Uh, yes, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cells. Uh, fun trivia information, uh, the mitochondria has uh, its own, uh, well, has, yeah, its own genetic uh, code that is in the mitochondria because it theorizes are theorized that basically the mitochondria was a bacteria that was swallowed in by a bigger nastier uh, uh, cell one one cell uh, organism and it started being uh, they started having a, a symbiotic um, relationships and where ultimately it lost some of its DNA and it started producing the uh, the energy that is used by uh, the rest of the cell. And so on the different points, so at the end of G1, you have restrict, uh, a restriction point. It's a point where uh, the cell uh, will look if it has favorable conditions, if there are uh, growth factors uh, in, uh, that are coming to ask them to uh, divide or if there was uh, DNA damage. And then uh, there is another restriction point, which is at the end of G2, where uh, these, the, the cell will basically check if the DNA is damaged or if there is DNA that is not duplicated. And uh, when there is too much damaged, uh, damage, the cells will be uh, there is a mechanism inside that will drive it to go uh, to for the cell to die. But in some cases, that mechanism uh, is doesn't work, and so the cell will be able to uh, to to continue uh, dividing. And so, what are these? Um, 
Oh, my pleasure. Uh, my my deep, great, great pleasure. So um, I said earlier that we had, oh, uh, let me come back to this. And so you have two types. I mentioned earlier two types of main types of proteins, oncogenes and tumor suppressors. Oncogenes will be the ones that will go towards uh, the division of the cell. And they are counterbalanced by tumor suppressor genes, which are proteins that are involved in uh, blocking, checking uh, that conditions are indeed favorable and that the cell can continue its cell cycle. And so uh, oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes can, uh, well, there, there can be mutations because as you can see in the cellular cycle and during this, the S phase, uh, you have some uh, duplication of the DNA. And when the duplication goes on, uh, the, the machinery for the duplication is imperfect. And so they will make mistakes. Uh, those mistakes are important because uh, those mistakes allow for um, uh, adaptation. It's the, the, the main thing that I help uh adaptation from bacteria to different environments that could then lead to uh well which led to evolution basically it's the the the, the power source behind uh is that why your chance of getting cancer as you get older yes exactly exactly because the older you get the more your cell have developed uh, have divided and the higher the chance that uh, something goes wrong, exactly. And so oncogenes have different way of going haywire. Um, it can be a something simple. Yeah, it's very, very uh, fascinating indeed, uh, Ice Lord. So it can be a point mutation. So there is a protein, HRAS, which is one of the uh, most important. Uh, well, it, it has been known as Incogene. I think it's one of the first Oncogenes that has been uh, discovered and assessed as being an Oncogene. Uh, so we know rather well the, some of the mutations that uh, will lead to basically the cell with those, so some of those mutations. Uh, there is HRAS will not be able will not be able to control. So, sorry, uh, those oncogenes have usually, when they are, the, the proteins are there, they have a short lifespan, they have to be heavily controlled. And when they are no longer controlled, that's when things go bad. And so HRAS is one of those proteins. There's some mutations that uh, prevents it from being uh, blocked, uh, then it will continue, it will lead the cell to be uh, multiply all the time. Knowing that usually, one point mutation, for example, will not be enough. Uh, it will be a, an accumulation of uh, of um, of mutations. Another problem is gene amplification. That is something that can happen uh, at different point, um, and it's yeah when there is also the replication. Uh, you you may end up having multiple copies of. Uh, of the oncogene, uh, of the oncogene's gene, and therefore uh, the higher the expression of that uh, oncogene will be. Uh, you can have uh, what it was called translocation. So that's one is a, a tricky one. As you can see here, we have a um, chromosome nine, chromosome uh, twenty-two. Their representation. And at some point during the uh, the division, or it can be also uh, a lot. It will be during the meiosis, so during the uh, the the production of um, uh, ovocytes or uh, spermatozoids. So that will be involved in the uh, in reproduction. Uh, you can have bits of one chromosome that switches from. Uh, one chromosome to the other. And then uh, if it's in the part of the coding part for a protein, then you will have what is called a fusion protein. And that fusion protein 
will uh, potentially not have um, uh, one of its bits that allows it to be uh, controlled, or it will add something from another protein that is supposed to, they're supposed to interact only if uh, the cell cycle is, um, is activated, but here they will be always together. So uh, those, uh, for example, that fusion BCR-ABL will allow uh, for, will lead to chronic uh, mulogenous uh, leukemia. And then you have a viral gene integration. So um, you have some uh, viruses, uh, like for example, the human T cell leukemia virus, which, well, th there are two, two aspects, uh, basically with uh, viral genes. So you can have, um, uh, and that one is a viral, so you can have a viral oncogene. So that's the case with uh, the human T cell leukemia virus. Uh, hello, Flamon which will basically have proteins that their goal is to uh, produce, uh, to lead to the production of viral proteins. And so they will lead, they will go on promoters to, uh, to produce gene uh, viral pr proteins. But they will usually, um, thank you Flomon for the follow, they will often, also interact with the promoter. So the promoter is, uh, so when you have the gene, you have the, the coding part that will lead, that will have the code for that protein. But in just before you have a promoter and this promoter will be basically where some proteins, uh, nuclear proteins will fit, will go to lead to the transcription and then translation into the protein. So this is how you control the expression of the gene. And uh, the text for protein, for example, of HTLV1 will always lead to a transcription uh, and production of some proteins, which some are involved in the cell cycle. So when text, the text protein is there, uh, you will have, that will lead to production of oncogenes and, the produ and therefore uh, division of cells, uh, a normal division of cells. Or, the viral, uh, some bits of the viral uh, genes can go into one of the oncogenes uh, gene sequence. Uh, my pleasure. And will therefore uh, lead to us overexpression of those oncogenes. And then you have, uh, so those are the mutations, uh, things that can lead to an overexpression of uh, oncogenes, that, which will activate the, uh, the cell cycle. And then you have the tumor, tum tumor suppressor family. Uh, one of them can be uh, the deletion or the mutation in the gene uh, that will lead to, um, to it not being uh, the, those tumor suppressor not being active. And if you don't have any working copy of those tumor suppressor, uh, then uh, the tumor suppressor is not there and therefore no control possible in preventing the, the cell uh, division to, to happen. Uh, and then you have, uh, yeah, some interesting protein. P53 is one of the, uh, well, Last time I checked, it was one of the most described protein uh, in cancer, especially because it interacts everywhere. Uh, it, it, its role is basically when there's DNA damage. So for example, a strand of DNA is, uh, is cut or anything, uh, P53 uh, will, be, um, will be activated, go, uh, uh, and uh, go to the promoter of some genes, like the P21 genes, uh, and then there will be um, translate the translation of P21, and P21 will go and then block P53. Uh, I believe, if I recall correctly, so that the uh, block the, the the cell cycle. No, it's indirectly. It will block the 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 cell cycle. But if P53 
uh, is deactivated, obviously. Or in some cases, if it's overexpressed, it can lead uh, to some uh, issues that will lead to um, the the too much division of the cells. Uh, and so, as I said, um, so when tumor suppressor genes, their function becomes um, so in normal cells, they are uh, for cell cycle control. They will prevent the cell cycle to go haywire. Um, but if both coffee, copies are inactivated, either by mutation or because they are deleted, uh, then um, it will lead to uh, carcinogenesis, so uh, to, to cancer. Oncogenes uh, are also involved in the uh, cell cycle control, but then it will, for them it will be more activating that uh, cell cycle. And their function is usually, uh, their in enhanced uh, function will lead uh, to, to cancer. So whereas uh, the tumor suppressor is considered as working in a recessive manner, meaning that you have to basically deactivate both copies of the gene to, uh, to lose uh, the tumor suppression function. Uh, oncogenes, basically one mutation in one copy, uh, you might remember that you have one copy of each chromosome, one copy coming from your father, one copy coming from your mother. So each genes uh, are basically, uh, you have a duplicate. Um, to mass suppressors, you need to have a deactivation of both copies. Uh, oncogenes, you, usually one copy activation will lead to uh, the whole mess. So usually, when the onco, what I said was oncogene uh, was normally working, we call them usually proto-oncogenes. Uh, and as I, I said earlier, they're, uh, they're there to uh, control the, the cell cycle, uh, respond to uh, growth factors, um, transductors, and, and so on. And so uh, cancer cells uh, are usually uh, in response to, uh, well, the lack of tumor suppressors, the, um, the activation, well, the, yeah, the, the operation of uh, oncogenes, uh, they will have frequent mitosis. So as I said, mitosis is the division of the cells. Uh, at start, you will have an increase of growth factor secretion that will lead cells to divide and divide and divide. Uh, up to a point where um, basically they will become independent of growth factors. And that's really starting, that's um, really a, a big problem. Uh, and there is also uh, afterwards the contact inhibition. So basically, usually uh, when you, uh, you have cells which divide, they will, uh, once they, they, they are really in close proximity with uh, one another, that will lead to cells uh, basically stopping to divide because they're, they fill in all the gaps. Uh, and that's how you can have, uh, yeah, normal structure, smooth, and so on. But then um, once the cancer cells are really in a uh, in full uh, division mode, uh, they will lose that contain, uh, contact inhibition, and that's how you will have uh, cell growth. Oops. Uh, as I said, increase no abnormal mitosis, so cells divide and divide. Uh, they lose their differentiated function. So, uh, for example, uh, if you look at uh, muscle cells, uh, you will see that they have a uh, a certain function, a certain shape, uh, uh, certain organization, uh, which will, uh, you, when you will see them, you will say, okay, this is, you see it independently and you will say, this is a, a muscle cell, or this is a neuron, or this is a, a petiolial cell, so for, from the skin. Uh, but um, when they become uh, cancerous, uh, they will lose that differentiation and they will go back to what we call more like a fibroblast. Uh, so it's a shape with 
uh, no real normal architecture, um, and they lose their their function. So uh, it becomes really problematic. For example, if you have a uh, uh, cancer, liver cancer, for example, because the liver, the cancer cells will replace the livers, the normal liver cells, but they don't have uh, the normal function, uh, and it's even worse with the pancreas because pancreas produces a lot of uh, enzymes and stuff that you, you that you need for normal work, uh, and then you end up having a pancreas that doesn't uh, produce any of this, and uh, the pancreas is one of those uh, organs that. Well, you can't live without. Um, one of the other things that we have that characterized by in cancer is that those cancer cells will start uh, expressing uh, androgenic uh, growth factor and will lead to uh, a new vascularization. So they will lead to the production of, um, of blood vessels that will start um, uh, feeding basically the, the tumor, which is not characteristic to all cancers, uh, because you have uh, some cancers which are not. Uh, um, hmm, I'll have to to check that. I think that the the pancreas has uh, too many uh, important stuff. I will check you uh, that again, uh, Viking. Thank you. Um, maybe I'm confused. I know that uh, wh basically when you have a uh, you're diagnosed with pancreas uh, cancer, uh, it's really, really, really bad news. I think at last time I heard uh, when you have diagnosed with pancreas cancer, basically, I won't, I don't want to say that you have six months left, but it's really, really bad news. And uh, well, with those new, uh, new blood vessels, basically you can have uh, some cells of your uh, primary tumor that will be able to go into the blood vessels, travel, and uh, go and seize uh, and seed in other organs, uh, leading to uh, what we call metastasis. Uh, and the problem, and it's one of the problem with pancreatic cancer, is that very often once you diagnose, you didn't directly diagnose pancreas factor um, cancer. Uh, basically, it's because you already have the metastasis. Um, just Googling the Mayo Clinic. Uh, it says that if your pancreas removed, you need to have a digestive enzyme pill to have before and after meal, require daily insulin and hormone replacement therapy. Yeah, yeah. So probably I'm having the, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm the old guy. Uh, maybe when I was, <laughs> had the info first, it was, uh, it was true because we didn't have uh, the dig digestive enzymes, uh, but that is yeah. When you can you can live with it without pancreas, but it's uh, it's heavy duty. I mean, um, so uh, how can so cancer is something that is uh, I won't say natural. Um, it's something that can happen uh, basically. Uh, just because, um, yeah, exactly. And I love learning. Uh, so I don't have any problem, uh, being taught stuff. Uh, so basically, as I said, uh, you have the simple fact of division of cells. Uh, you can have, uh, you have a chance of having cancer. So that's the main thing. Then you have some mutations that run in, in the family. Um, so that's the second thing. Um, and then you have environmental factors that, and I stress, be it all those factors, uh, be them, uh, well, basic chance is chance, uh, genetics or environmental factors are just, just, uh, chance. Um, it's, um, they will give you a higher chance of getting a certain type of cancer 
or of broad uh, forms of cancer. Uh, that doesn't mean that, um, for example, um, you have asbestos that was long used for um, in walls and so on for fire suppression uh, to prevent a fire from from spreading. Are there any cancer misconceptions that you've heard about that you can dispel? Well, uh, one is that, uh, for example, uh, smoking uh, like a fireman, as we say in French, uh, will lead to cancer. Uh, not always. Uh, that goes with what I was saying here. It's everything gives you it increases your chance of having cancer. It doesn't mean that you will have cancer. For example, there was this story of a uh, British, old British lady who was smoking its pack of, uh, had been smoking its pack of cigarettes for 40 years and was living very happily and in good health. Her parrot died of, uh, of lung cancer. Um, uh, so it can feel sometimes unfair and it's, it is unfair. Basically cancer is completely unfair. Uh, well, so, so much as we can consider, uh, cancer having human goal or so, uh, but, uh, they just lead to chances of ever having cancer. That would be possibly one of the biggest misconceptions. Um, yeah, my grandfather smoked 40 a day uh, for seven years, had no cancer issues. My mom smoked 40 a day for 20 years and she had part of a lung removed uh, due to cancer. Smoking just increased the risk. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, yeah, um, asbestos uh, will have mostly um, impact on the lungs because it's not the asbestos. Uh, so, for, um, uh, you can have sheets of asbestos that are used sometimes on the also on the roof. Um, and itself, it will have no. Um, it will not be carcinogenic. The problem is when there is uh, asbestos dust that you will inhale, and there they will have some uh, deep inf impact. With Benu, an ex chancellor of Germany, Helmut Schmidt, and smoked packs a day into his 90s and died shortly after he stopped smoking. We joke that the tar kept him together. <laughs> Most likely his system couldn't take the detox. Possibly, possibly. Um, I think that there is some po a point where uh, indeed it becomes, uh, I wouldn't say too late, but yeah, maybe in his 90s he was too weak to handle uh, quitting smoking. We know already that Quitting smoking is more difficult than it appears, uh, than some would like to say. Uh, some like to say, I can stop any day. Um, I was lucky enough not to handle very much. I couldn't bear the the, uh, the smell of the, of the, the smoke, so uh, I was never tempted to smoke. Um, but I know that my father, for example, he smoked uh, a lot. Um, and he ended up quitting smoking, uh, but he, I know he had some trouble. I've seen him sometimes. I was afraid that he would go back to smoking because he would just smoke once and I would see the smile on his face and I was, oh fuck, <laughs> let's hope he will not go. Uh, so no truth that Wi-Fi or radiation will give you brain cancer then. <sighs> um, it's the same. It's, uh, it can increase, well, 5G, I, I don't have enough knowledge, but I know that, for example, Bluetooth, if you don't pay attention, can have. Uh, I, I had my, uh, one of my former boss, um, when I was working at university, uh, basically, you know, those, um, those headsets, you know, that you have just on, on the side here uh, for the mobile? <laughs> Clearly causes COVID. Good man. Don't <laughs> you read anything about the garden? <laughs> um, uh, the 
So I, I think that Bluetooth, uh, when you have something that is close to the head, probably can have an impact. Uh, but is it really? Uh, I don't have, personally, I don't have enough information. Uh, I will not say that it has uh, a definite uh, in causing cancer or not. Uh, it's the one difference, and that's something that I saw several times and I agree with, with uh, on, um, on social media. It's that the problem is that the people who know know the limit of their knowledge, and so they will appear sometimes unsure because they will admit that they do not know. Uh, the Karens, for example, to re to take another, uh, will be forceful in what they say and will appear more convincing because they will say that they know, when, even when it's most of the time BS. Different function and polyp formation. Does C. diff cause cancer? Uh, C. diff, what, what's that? Why is the large intestine seemingly more uh, prone to cancer than the small intestine? Um, that is something I must admit that I will have to look into. Uh, and potentially, I'm going to copy this uh, and uh, try to have an answer for Saturday or uh, Tuesday. because I'm interested to know is on telioma cancer in the US that is a big time for anyone who uh, dealt with asbestos yeah because uh, cases of it are coming out of the woodwork long after it was removed school children specifically from the 60s so yeah and um, I had uh, my, my neighbor uh, with mesontelioma uh, cancer um, he was working in um, how do you call uh, central heating and so, you know, those, uh, those stuff, uh, the big ones uh, had uh, asbestos in it because of its um, thermic, I think it had thermic uh, isolation properties. And so he smelled, uh, he, he breathed basically uh, asbestos dust for a few years. And then like 10 or 15 years after he stopped, stopped working in it, uh suddenly uh, i saw him one day he was doing very well he was uh, br uh what's the expression bright and bushy tails and uh two months after there was a a friend who told me you know your 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 uh your neighbor uh died i was what from two in two months he went to very working in his garden uh veggies and so on and uh and the year after uh the two months later he was dead and it was yeah it, it goes really really fast it's a, a nasty one that one uh yeah uh so um diet uh can be uh have uh an impact on cancer uh, and uh, I think one of the trivia information is that, for example, meat uh, will cause gastrointestinal carcinoma, uh, so gastrointestinal uh, cancer. Salt fish will cause the nasopharyngeal uh, cancer, and that is why uh, gastro gastrointestinal cancer is more predominant in Europe and the United States uh, than in Japan. And it's the reverse for the nasopharyngeal uh, cancer because of the different um, um, diets between those areas. I eat meat daily and I'm obese uh, and I drink alcohol once a week at least. Yeah, um, well, drinking alcohol once a week um, is not, it depends, first it depends on which alcohol and it depends on how much alcohol you drink on that occasion. For example, it's been said that um, some labs have, dis have um, documented that drinking a glass of wine each day 
uh, can help you against Alzheimer's, for example, without too much without si those side effects. But if basically the problem of the alcohol with the hepatocellular carcinoma, it's that um, if you drink too much at the same time, uh, all that ethanol has uh, is toxic for the uh, liver cells. And if you, so uh, those cells that die have to be replaced. And the more they are divide to replace the dead cells, uh, the higher chance you have of a cirrhosis and an epitocellular uh, carcinoma. So, uh, honestly, Viking, I would suggest that. Um, so, if you drink a glass of beer or a uh, or glass of wine, uh, there is no problem. Even if you drink a, a glass of vodka, I won't. I won't say it will be bad. Uh, if you spend your evening drinking glasses of vodka or gin or whatever, that will be uh, bad. I drink, uh, and obviously that is a risk factor. It's not that you will always get that if you drink. Um, meat, I would suggest, uh, so I'm a carnivore, right? I love uh, meat. I... Uh, Uh, kimchi, I will add that to my list of research to do during the weekend. Kimchi fermented food cancer. Um, but meat, uh, I would suggest lowering your uh, amount of meat that you eat because, uh, yeah, uh, too much meat um can have an impact both so on cancer and your uh if you're obese uh i know that i still eat a little too much meat so i won't blame you i mean i'm a meat eater <laughs> i'm a meatosaurus um but try to reduce uh, i think it's considered that in the uh western world um we are over, on average, that's counting also the vegetarians and so on, we are over double the advised intake of meat, of proteins. So I would suggest lowering your uh, the amount. Uh, I know that, for example, with my wife, and this comes naturally, I'm not trying to become a uh, vegetarian in the least, um, but we've reduced, so usually now we have one meal usually lunch uh, with meat and the other one without. Um, but sometimes I go back to, to both, <laughs> eating for both. It depends. Um, so yeah, we mentioned smoking. To join team a little less meat, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's always the problem. It's uh, alcohol can be good for your health, uh, but too much is bad. Uh, you have uh, al uh, meat, it's the same thing. Um, fish gives you a lot of uh, good nu nutrients. It's good to eat fish, uh, but if you eat too much, you have some problems. Uh, and some will say um, that there is one thing that can't be bad for you, it's water. But if you were, if you drink too much water, um, then uh, you have an increased chance of uh, bladder cancer. So whatever you do, <laughs> too much, you're fucked. That being said, I'm not trying to be negative and uh, depressing or anything. If only, if I, there is only one message I would like you to remember of those environmental uh, thing is not to say that uh, you have, <laughs> whatever happens, you're fucked. Uh, uh, there is a phrase from a French, what, is, what was it? That basically life was a, uh, a lethal disease or something. Because anyways, in the end, 
uh, you, you will end up uh, six feet under. Um, Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's so. I'm not even a smoking. I won't. I, I won't judge people smoking. I would suggest not smoking because uh, it really has bad impact. But then again, small <laughs> oxygen makes you rust. <laughs> uh, there possibly something to that. Um. Uh, about that, uh, there is one thing that I would like to debunk. It's not directly related to cancer, uh, but it's that thing where, uh, what was it saying? That with the new uh, vaccine uh, for COVID. Uh, so I'm not saying uh, get vaccinated or whatever. It's not, um, it's not the goal of this uh, stream here. We're talking about cancer. But there was... The, there are some ideas that are completely stupid. Uh, and one of the ideas is that they're going to put, so in some, uh, um, in some vaccines that are already used, they use aluminum as a, um, to help make the, the, the vaccine potent. And so some say that basically they're adding uh, aluminium and the anti-COVID vaccine to transform you into a 5G uh, receiving antenna so that they can control you and monitor you all the time. Which is <laughs> insane because the amount of aluminium that they're going to put in you is like this. But in all of your cells, and I think about that because, uh, Wisp, you were talking about rust. Uh, in each and every one, especially of your blood cells, you have iron. <laughs> what better? <laughs> so basically, your entire vascular system is an iron antenna. <laughs> So it's not the little bit of aluminium that they will give you in a vaccine if they have aluminium. I, I don't. I have no idea if there is aluminium in those new, those upcoming vaccines. But even if there is aluminium, that is nothing compared to the amount of iron you have in any ways in your body. Anyways, um, so yeah, smoking can especially. Uh, so I can't say why uh, smoking has an impact on the bladder. I guess some of the molecules that uh, you inhale from um, uh, from the smoking will go through, uh, will go into your blood, uh, and then will be the, your your uh, blood will be cleaned by the kidneys, and then uh, those stuff will be um, sent into your bladder where they can have a local impact, uh, yeah, lo localized uh, impact. Um, but obviously smoking with, uh, given that you're breathing, uh, it will have an impact on the, all the area involved in, uh, in breathing. Um, but the black Hebrew Israelites told me that, uh, it's the melanin that allows them to receive the secret communications of the universe and therefore uh, are the most enlightened people. 5G COVID vaccine is obviously just a plot to catch up to their magic. <laughs> um, as far as I know, melanin uh, is only there because um, it protects you from uh, the UV from the sun. Which is one thing that to keep in mind, uh, I have not listed it. Well, uh, it's mostly, uh, uh, yeah, it can be called considered as one of the radiation, uh, except that here it's, um, it's from mining. Uh, but obviously, uh, the UV, uh, 
has an impact on, uh, will damage your DNA uh, and your uh, skin cells. Um, so uh, avoid going too much in the sun if unless you are tanned. Uh, and before you get a beautiful tan, avoid being too much in the sun. <laughs> yeah, I can. I love smoking cannabis. I'm not a cancer myth. Um, yeah, no, it's not good for. Uh, sort of that I ever smoked. Yeah, uh, I smoke. Actually, I smoked only once. I I managed to smoke. Well, I got. Uh, it was not really tr tricked into. Uh, but I was in a Lebanese restaurant and I uh, tested the um, water pipe, the shisha. I was, it was nice, but that's the only, t I, I did it only once. Um, but yeah, it did, I guess that smoking cancer, uh, smoking cancer, <laughs> smoking cannabis uh, in small quantities has a positive impact. It's used in, uh, in some medicine stuff. But again, uh, it depends on the quantity of, uh, of smoke you smoke. Uh, one more serious note, high melanin uh, is bad in the northern hemisphere as it blocks too much of the two-week sunlight here, preventing your skin to metabolize vitamin D3, uh, leading to depression. Yeah, and that's why, uh, even for me, uh, so I'm basically originally from Nice, uh, southern France. Uh, now I'm in Belgium. Uh, I take vitamin D uh, during winter because otherwise I become... Uh, depressed well it's not actually depressed i won't call it depressed because uh that would be insulting towards people who actually are de uh get depressed uh but yeah my i become not good No smoke there are hard enough to activate. <laughs> so uh, yeah, contraceptive concept. Uh, let's continue. Uh, contraceptive uh, pills uh, can lead to breast cancer, cervical cancer, but has a uh, positive uh, impact on ovarian cancer. Yeah, uh, it's very seasonal. And uh, on a side note, uh, note that uh, vit vitamin D is good also uh, to fight the worst effects of the uh, uh, COVID-19. Uh, we get that a lot here in Seattle because it rains. Yeah, yeah, because when you don't have the sun, even if you are uh, not tanned at all, uh, it becomes, uh, you still get the effect of uh, lack of vit vitamin D. Uh, so there are different viruses, uh, as I mentioned above uh, previously, that can lead to cancer. Uh, there are different impacts. Uh, hepatitis uh, B virus uh, will lead to the death of uh, uh, liver cells, as I, remo as I recall, uh, and therefore division and activation of the gel of the genes. Um, Human T cell leukemia virus uh, will have an oncogene, will bring an oncogene. Above that, uh, for more organic reasons. Yeah. Don't want to do it, though. Uh, if you want to know, I'm more giving you a note after your cancer talk. Yeah, or you can come on my, we can continue talking about it. Uh, afterwards on my Discord if you want to join and have information on um, seasonal affective disorder. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, in the HIV also can uh, lead to cancer because obviously uh, in normal times when you have um, some, um, some cells that go haywire, as I said, um, there are some internal mechanisms that lead to the cell to die, uh, but sometimes uh, those the proteins that are in charge of that control go haywire, leading to division of those cells. But sometimes um, when they go haywire, you, the human your immune system is there to fight the, those cells, 
and it can do a very good job at that. But sometimes um, the, the the cells will manage to avoid the immune system, and when you have the immune uh, the AIDS, for example, uh, then your immune system, you, when you're immunodepressed, uh, your immune system won't be able to uh, fight the uh, fight the cancer. Um, mm -hmm. And then you have uh, other cell, other uh, you have bacteria that can have a um, uh, lead to cancer, uh, Helicobacter pylori, which is also uh, uh, responsible of ulcers, you know, those gastric ulcers, uh, uh, which are a lot of a thing I feel now than uh, when I was uh, than 25 years ago. Uh, when you're stressed, you, you get ulcers and your uh, stomach gets destroyed and you uh, stomach fluids go into your body and it's Increase damage. Um, well, basically, it's been known that um, uh, Helicobacter pylori uh, is the real. Re well, stress increases it, but uh, the uh, Helicobacter pylori is responsible of this, and so uh, it attacks the gastric cells, and um, and so they they have to divide, and they will lead to uh, to cancer. And you have some parasites which can cause bladder uh, cancer. And to finish that part, which was it lasted a little longer, but we discussion got derailed a little bit. We had a, a nice little talk. Uh, basically, um, one slide about with, uh, regarding um, uh, trivia information. Those are the most common cancers. So for women, it's uh, uh, breast, colorectal, and lung, and for men, it's lung, colorectal, and prostate. Uh, basically, because women don't have pr uh, prostate, so uh, they can't have that cancer, and um, men have less uh, division of cells because they don't have the cycle, which leads to uh, breast breastfeeding and so on, uh, and so. Uh, they don't get the same type of cancer as well. They have less risk of getting uh, breast cancer. And that is all for this discussion.